I'm Limo Milan, and in this video, we're going to look at grouping return tracks in Ableton Live. So return tracks are the part within the Ableton Live mixing environment where we can host different types of processing, which can be fed from different sends from different tracks. So historically, it's used so you can have coherence in your mix. You can have one reverb that's set up and feed different instruments by different amounts to that reverb and give the mix a sense that those instruments are all coming from an actual physical space. Modern times, nowadays it's a mix of having like an authentic space and being more sound design orientated and going for something that's synthetic but still interesting to the ear. So at the moment I've got a return track which is a big reverb, I have an echo, I actually have a noise uh, uh, processing track, return track, which has the vocoder on it as a noise uh, uh, envelope shaped noise, and then I have parallel distortion as well, all means of getting my mix to sound the way that I want it to by being able to feed it again from different tracks using the sends to these return tracks. Now, when we go to this extreme level of processing to shape our mix, there are a few issues that can happen along the line. One of them can be that the actual volume of all these effects might need to come down at some point, and you don't want to necessarily deal with automating the volume of each individual return track. You want to group them and have them controllable as a single entity rather than all these different separate components. Another reason might be that you want to process them so they become unified. So maybe you want to process all your return tracks with a certain colourful characteristic device, just help them gel better in the mix. Or maybe put some compression and use the sidechain input and make the return effects as a whole, again grouped, duck and uh, drum part the way of your kick drum or your other drum work and rhythmical parts as well. Now there's an issue with trying to group the return tracks within Ableton Live. If we go for the most obvious option, it doesn't actually compensate for delays that happen within the plugins and we start getting a slightly uh, less defined mix because the return tracks, once they're grouped, become delayed from the rest of the project and we get this what we call comb filtering that happens between the two different types of audio pathways. So I'll show that in practice. So I'm going to just mute all the return tracks but the distorted uh, parallel distortion track because that one is constantly running throughout. It's not necessarily just turned up or down through a certain part of the track. So I'll play that now. So that's return track D and you can see that certain aspects have more fed to that distortion than others, but generally the whole mix to some or to most of the degree is going to that to add more excitement uh, behind the main uh, dry sounds. Now, let's talk about grouping. So I have an audio track set up here, which I've called Return Effects Group. So it's an audio track within my main mix. It's not part of the return track section. It's set to monitor a signal when it goes in, and we'll see that option appear when I actually route these return tracks to there. And then that goes to my main mix. Now, ordinarily in Ableton Live, when we're doing routing between different tracks and grouping and so on, it will always compensate for the delays that are inherent between the devices it's using. But again, historically and to this point in time uh, with uh, Live 11, there's still this delay that happens. So I'm going to just route all these return tracks through to that return effects group. And I'm going to undo that and then redo it so you can hear the difference as this happens. So when this is set to master, it means those return tracks are going straight to my master or mix bus. But when I switch it to the other option, it's jumping through that channel first, then going through to the mix bus. So that's my return track group. So as you can hear, there's a dramatic difference in timbre because that distortion, that parallel distortion, has been slightly delayed when it runs back into the mix environment through that audio track. So that's going to massively affect the quality of our sound that we might have already put together if we take that option. The purpose of doing it, if you remember, could be that we want to maybe filter out all the return effects at once. So we could put on, let's say, a, an auto filter to there. And then as, as part of a creative point in our tune, we might have it that all those, let's get all the other sounds going as well. We might have it that all those sounds, when they get to the peak of this build here, they can be controlled in a way that's very creative and easy because it's just one group is being automated. So let's just try that now. And let's route those through to that return track again. Or return group. So 
so I can control all those parallel return effects. So aside from the fact that that works in terms of the creative application, it's still got that delay, so we're changing the nature of our mix by doing it. So this is the workaround. What we need to do is take our four return tracks and have a final fifth return track and feed all these into that one first. Then it can go to the main mix. Then on that fifth return track, that one can have our ducking side chaining. We can mute it when we don't want any of the effects to play at a certain point in our arrangement as well. And the delay is compensated for, so we don't get that cone filtering effect. So in order to do that, we need to create a return track that's going to be our group return track. So I'll give it a name, just using rename now. And then we need to root all of these out from what would normally be the master to our return effects. Now, if we go to the options here, the return tracks can't actually be fed a direct input, so they're not available there. So what we have to do is use the send system to send our four return tracks through to that final one so it can be summed together as a group and then carry on to the mix bus. So for the actual direct audio two output of our four return effects, we're going to go for sends only. So that no longer sends those four tracks to the mix. And what we'll need to do is use send E from each of these individual return tracks so they can then be fed through to that fifth one there. So by default, they're not available because if you allow return effects to feed into each other, you can start easily getting into feedback loop issues. So be careful with this and don't enable the return effect sends that you don't need to. I'm going to enable the E send for the first, second, third, and fourth return effects. So now turn those up so they're all going to my final group return effects. Okay, so now I can add that auto filter that I wanted to. And the sonic quality has not been hampered this time, the delay's been compensated for. and now I can control it. So let's put the actual application in, in a creative context. So if I play this as it is. And we open up the return effects group. The auto filter is still selected for automation because it's the last thing I touched on the devices. And let's go for a filter sweep to take this sound out during that rest before the drop. So really good when we've got these sort of unruly effects that have long decays and so on, which is part of the atmosphere of our track, but at a certain point we either want to go to full digital silence or do something that dramatically alters the properties of it. This is way more manageable now that we group them in a way that doesn't affect the quality of our mix. In this video, we've looked at grouping return tracks. The reason for doing this has been explained in terms of its creative use or just general control and getting a tighter mix with all these effects that can happen. We've also looked at the actual downside of doing this by routing it through an audio track within our main mix versus using another return track to group the other return tracks and get better control without a compromise of our mix quality.